I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we draw out the mechanisms for chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the chemical transformation depicted above. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and see if you can write out the mechanism for this transformation. And make sure you stick around to the end because I have another mechanism for you for next week's video. I think this reaction is really cool because we're turning a four-membered ring with a carbonyl into a five-membered ring that has an ester now. So an oxygen atom has been inserted in between the carbonyl and this carbon and part of the ring. The first step, which is very often the case anytime you have a carbonyl group and some acid, is going to be protonation at this position, which is going to severely and incredibly activate this functional group. In fact, following protonation at this position, that is going to make the carbonyl carbon incredibly susceptible to nucleophilic attack from even weak nucleophiles like water, for example. So water can therefore come in and attack this carbonyl carbon because it is so incredibly activated following protonation of this carbonyl oxygen. And once that happens, that's going to kick up these electrons to make this a, new, a neutral alcohol. And that generates an intermediate which looks like this, where now we have a, the, the makings of an acetal group, where we're going to eventually end up with two alcohols. And we do that through a proton transfer where the hydrogen here is actually going to eventually either through a mechanism that utilizes water to transfer the proton or even potentially in some cases an intramolecular proton transfer. The proton is eventually going to be transferred over to this other alcohol group. And proton transfers occur readily anytime you have these similar type of functional groups. So I'm going to draw out what that product is going to look like following that proton transfer where the proton has been transferred over to this other alcohol and that is going to leave behind our acetal at this position. So now that we have uh, done that proton transfer, what remains is two alcohols here which we call an acetal functional group. It's very common in protecting group chemistry and that gives us our next step in our mechanism. And from here what we can have is a cascade of electron flow where we would take the lone pair of electrons on this alcohol and what we're going to see is several different electron movements are going to happen which eventually kick off this very good leaving group. Now that we have this positively charged water molecule which can act as a good leaving group. So these can come down to form our new carbonyl which is then going to open this ring right here and move these electrons to this position which is then going to move these electrons over into this position to reform a different type of pi bond which is going to to liberate that water molecule as a good leaving group. And that is going to generate this intermediate as your next step. And from here, notice that we have a protonated what's effectively a carboxylic acid, but at this carbonyl oxygen, we have protonated that. Because remember, those electrons came down to open our ring and form that carboxylic acid with the protonated oxygen here. And from here, the next step that happens is actually going to be another one of those proton transfers. So this proton is actually going to end up being at this carbon position following that proton transfer. And this can happen in a variety of ways. Remember that importantly, proton transfers can sometimes happen via intramolecular pathways, or occasionally, remember, we also have water around. So this water could come deprotonate this uh, hi this hydrogen to, to form our neutral carboxylic acid at this, at this position. And then the very next step could be, for example, you can protonate using these pi electrons to come and deprotonate our newly formed H3O plus that occurred at this step. So oftentimes, because this is such a common type of mechanism in organic chemistry, we oftentimes just write proton transfer and it's assumed that you recognize that either one of these pathways, intramolecular or via a water molecule, acting as a proton shuttle between different parts of the molecule occur. So just keep that in mind in case you ever see written out in mechanisms, just simply PT to indicate that there's a proton transfer that has happened. So that proton transfer that occurred leaves behind this carbocation. So remember we have taken these pi electrons, which has been protonated at this carbon position. So now we see that there are two hydrogens here, and this is going to leave behind a carbocation that is relatively stable given that it's a tertiary carbocation. And it's at this point that we can begin to reform this five-membered ring and move over the pi bonds. What will happen is these electrons on the oxygen will come down to form a new carbonyl carbon at this position, which will then liberate these pi electrons to form a new covalent bond between the oxygen and this carbon bond, which is then going to move over these pi electrons to create a neutral species at this carbon to carbon bond, leaving behind this double bond actually. And following the loss of this proton, probably again from water coming in and deprotonating, what is going to be a positively charged oxygen will actually give rise to our product. So again, that's following deprotonation of this hydrogen, probably through a water molecule. And that gives us our overall transformation. So every step here occurred via 
pathways that you've probably encountered when you took organic chemistry. So we have protonation of a carbonyl oxygen, followed by a nucleophilic attack to open up the carbonyl pi electrons, which will then create our, eventually, our acetal, or our carbon with two oxygens on them. And then we can have a reformation of a carbonyl carbon, which is going to open up this four-membered ring and cause an electron cascade to occur, which will liberate water as a leaving group, regenerating our water species, which can later act as a proton shuttle between this protonated group here and eventually placing it on this carbon, which is what generates our carbocation. And then again, our electron cascade can occur one more time, which will create our five-membered ring and neutralize this protonated, this uh, carbocation at this position here. I'd love to hear how you did, so drop it as a comment down below. For next week's video, I'd love for you to solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. And make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on the solution on next week's Mechanism Monday.